Hello, Christina Renzo. Thanks for tuning in to this video. Hope you all are doing well. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this with your friends. And as um, I recently read in Romans 11, it's only from him, to him, and with him uh, to God be the glory. And it's it's just been so chaotic. When Whenever I close or have closed with praying for our nation, I do not take that, I do not say that for granted. And you know, the recent case of uh, the attempt assassination of Trump, but uh, this video is not most, is not focused on this. This is pretty much the human heart and where um, it's always been wicked. Parents of this shooter, um, 20 year old kid, what was I, my second year of college, just studying abroad my first year and working in a dish room somewhere to pay for books. Who in their right mind at that age is thinking about assassinating a former president? All this political things going on, none, none of it in, in either side. You don't agree, fine. You don't agree with the candidate. But to take the person's life, no. I did see an image on Facebook. Uh, one of my sisters from church posted a uh, like a uh, the image of a golden angel. Must be a statue next to Trump. And yes, it's true. It's only by the grace of God that he is still alive. Um, you know, it uh, the way the news uh, described the incident, he slightly turned to the right because he's a mover when he speaks at these rallies. So the bullet pretty much grazed his right ear. And thankfully, he's all right. He did come to the first day of the RNC convention. And <clears throat> I am looking forward to hearing his speech as well as uh, J.D. Vance. I'm going to do a video on him later on this evening as his running uh, candidate. And um, another thing about this, uh, it's unfortunate the fellow that did take the bullet, middle age, if you can even call him that, only 50 years old, took the bullet at this rally. Um, don't know much about the guy that just said he went to church a lot. Whether he's in the presence of the Lord right now, Again, only the Lord knows that answer, because uh, everyone in church is not is not saved. Uh, some people think that's a way of salvation, and um, and I've mentioned that before, what the gospel is and what the gospel is not. And I'm in the process of uh, making a little mini manuscript, a book, or whatever uh, about these things, and hopefully, probably. I'll get around it. Um, Holy Spirit leads by the end of the summer. It'll probably be published as a little, uh, but this is about the church and, um, you know, how our attitude should be Christ-like. And it's unfortunate. I was talking to a colleague today. He's he's not a believer. And um, he said, uh, like in a lot of uh, Christians, he just doesn't see any light in us. Um, because he wants it shown and not just what we say. So, um, yes, we have, to, as a Western American church, we do have to do better. And uh, lastly, before I read the script um, that was shared during a Bible study, we have Todd Burns, uh, I think his name is Starnes. I met him briefly at a CPAC a couple of summers ago. It was around um, a J a July, excuse me, as a matter of fact. And he has the audacity to criticize pastors for not making pa uh, presidents, uh, former presidents Trump attempt assassination in their sermons. I mean, my pastor talked about it briefly. That's how I found out about it because I don't get engaged in news like that unless I'm doing a story, a story like this one, or for my radio program or whatnot. 
because uh, I discover you you watch these things all uh, mainstream or CNN and and Fox you uh, watch these all day it just corrupts your mind so I rather focus on I uh, have a clear head and if I want to focus build my uh, mind with the things of God and, and my heart filled with the Holy Spirit and that's how I can have peace <clears throat> But uh, suppose a pastor didn't hear about it until Sunday morning, like I did this past Sunday, about the assassination. And, you know, there is one pastor that didn't talk about that. A couple of pastors did mention it briefly. You know, I understand this is our nation and the frustration, but you don't have to, you know, get all upset and call pastors' names. Now, I don't know what church he goes to, or if he goes to church, then maybe he should focus on his own uh, pastor or the church where he fellowships or whatnot. And, you know, it, I mean, he just crossed the line. I'm not going to read um, the quotes. If you want to know more about that, just catch the radio program on CRN Channel 6 Talk Radio, uh, 5 Central Standard Time on Sunday. Uh, you can hear more detail about that as I read. But uh, as before I close, I'm going to read, uh, we were talking about a book of Colossians in the Bible study that I'm in on uh, Sunday afternoons, uh, Sunday mornings after the first church, the first service of the church I attend, and then I go to this one, you know, to be fed the word of God. But this was something interesting about Philip Keller and it's uh, an excerpt from Psalm 23. It was, this was my grandfather's favorite song. So this talks about the whole human nature, and then uh, I'm going to close. All the long and complex history of Earth's religion, pagan worship, and human philosophy is bound up in this instinctable thirst for God. David, when he composed Psalm 23, knew this. He, the good shepherd, leads me besides quiet waters. God alone knows where the still, quiet, deep, clean, pure water is to be found that can satisfy his sheep and keep fit. Generally speaking, water for the sheep come from the water in three sources, dew on the grass, deep wells, springs, and streams. When sheep are thirsty, they become restless and set out and search for water if not led to good or the supplies of clean pure water they will often end up drinking from the polluted pothole where they can pick up parasites and disease germs sheep by habit raised just before dawn yeah that's it dawn and feed when vegetation is drenched with dew which is clear, clean, pure source of water. The good shepherd, the diligent manager, manager, make sure the sheep that his sheep can be out and grazing dew drenched vegetation. The difficulty in all of this is that men and women who are thirsty for God, who do not have an inner sense of searching, what no man seeks after. God, the Bible says, who are in a quiet that, who are in a quest, excuse me, of which will completely satisfy, often are unsure of what, of where to look and or really what they are looking for. The inner spiritual capacity of God divine is desiccated or dried up. In the dilemma that will drink from any dirty pool to try to satisfy their search for fulfillment. In the Christian life, it is it of more than passing significance to observe that those who are often the most serene, most confident, and able to cope with life's perplexities are those who rise early each day to feed on God's word. The biographies of great men and women of God repeatedly point out how the secret of the success in their spiritual life was attributed to the quiet one. 
of each morning. The steel dews of his spirit can be dropped into my life and soul. But the irony of life and tragic truth is that people who try to satisfy their thirst by thirst by just pursuing other sorts of substitutes, okay, uh, as you pretty much uh, in a nutshell, it closes the things of this world. Uh, rather, it's uh, uh, things that satisfy the flesh. Uh, you know this. Uh, it's mentioned in First uh, uh, Corinthians six nine through eleven. And also in Galatians 5, uh, sexual, immoral, idolatry, anger, jealousy, lying, slander, and also replacing subject matters that have nothing to do with the Lord either. So that's in a nutshell. I just thought that was interesting how he started the, the Bible study with that. And we're in the book of Colossians, which is a New Testament um uh the book before Thessalonians so uh and that's about uh the, the whole uh God's character his physical character being the uh head trinity okay if you want to know more about the godhead Colossians is also a great book to uh look into i think it's maybe uh four or five chapters so you can read it probably in half an hour Christina Red Soul, thanks for listening. Pray for our nation, our brothers and sisters under the persecuted church, and what's happening in the Middle East. And may the Lord bless you, keep you, and his light shine upon you. And I'll talk to you as soon as the Lord wills it.